Okay, so we're going to talk about the cephalosporins now, and that you remember the cephalosporins also have that uh, beta lactam ring, but uh, they have a uh, fourth generation, I think this is the fifth generation. Anyway, <clears throat> so thinking about these, um, they may be comparable to the penicillins in their expect extended spectrum penicillins, but uh, the first generation basically were for gram positive uh, cocci. And but they uh, didn't work well for MRSA or for some staff, and so uh, an example here that was used was um, cefazolin, which is ANCEF, and these are mostly focusing on gram-positive uh, cocci. The second generation an example is cefoxetin, um, and uh, these have increased um, action against gram-negative and also gram-positive rods. Uh, focusing on enteric uh, bacteria. So, moving on to becoming a little bit more gram negative, and then the third generation is it becoming even more gram negative and focusing on um, examples, for example, uh, Pseudomonas, uh, Agarinosa, Haemophilus influenza. Uh, but then they are less active um, against gram positive bugs than the first generation, so the first generation may be better if you have gram positive. So an example here is a uh, ceftriaxone and ceftazidime uh, and uh, so you could uh, remember that these are uh, anti-pseudomonal. Uh, so the fourth generation is uh, also going to be good for pseudomonas, streptococci and MRSA and uh, these are, um, you know, you could think of these as being broad spectrum covering both gram-positive and gram-negative.